Hello everyone, today I'm here to provide a comprehensive beginner's guide to Arma 3. We'll cover mods, servers and various gameplay types as we progress through the content, making it easier for you the player. Let's get started. Let's kick things off with number one on our list, that's how to mark your map and bring up your trusty compass. To open the map, simply press the M key. Once you've got the map up, it's time to get creative. To draw on the map, press and hold the left control key, then left click and hold your mouse while dragging it across the map. You can create everything from smiley faces to more intricate designs, just remember to keep it appropriate guys, please. But that's not all. If you're more of a straight line type of guy, you can draw straight lines on the map by pressing and holding both left control and left shift. Then left click and drag. You can challenge your friends to a game of X's and O's or tic-tac-toe or knots and crosses for our American and Commonwealth English viewers. Now let's talk about the compass. Bring up the compass, press the K key or double tap it to keep it on screen. When you're on the map, double left clicking the compass will enlarge it, making it easier to read. And if you want to hide it again, just double tap K once more. Number two on our list is all about joining your friends online, whether it's through dedicated or non-dedicated servers. But first, let's understand the distinction between the two. A non-dedicated server is hosted on your or your friend's PC. It's a straightforward, zero-cost option, but it's temporary. Once the host and everyone else are done playing, the server shuts down. You also have the flex flexibility to select your multiplayer missions when setting up a non-dedicated server. On the other hand, a dedicated server is like having your own private gaming space. You can either rent one from hosting providers like Arma Hosts or Nitrato, or you can build your own using a second PC at home. The dedicated server stays active for as long as you want it to, or as long as the person hosting the server is online. This is how we in Idiots and in other communities kept our liberation sessions, the uh, Vindicta sessions, running 24-7. Now, let's talk about how to connect to these servers. There are two primary methods. LAN or local area network. This is for when you and your friends are in the same physical location or on the same local network. Just make sure everyone is online on Steam before joining the game, otherwise you just not join. Internet. This method is for connected with friends over the internet. You can use the friends tab or the internet tab in the server browser, similar to how you do it in LAN. If you have a server's IP address and port number, you can also use the direct connect option to join, which is recommended. Next up, at number three, let's talk about joining a unit or group in Arma Tree. These units can offer a wide range of experiences, from serious mill sim or military simulation to semi-realism, star sim like Star Wars or even the light-hearted shits and giggles groups who play just for fun. No matter which group you choose, one thing is almost guaranteed, they will help you learn the basics and teach you how to use mods effectively. In my extensive 1000 plus hours of playing Arma Tree, I'd estimate that about 980 of those hours were spent playing with incredible communities like Idiots and Void. You'd be surprised to see how veterans in the Arma Tree community, myself included, are more than willing to guide and teach you the ropes of this fantastic game. So whether you're a hardcore Milsim enthusiast or just looking for some casual fun, there's a unit or group out there that will suit your style. Don't be afraid to reach out and make some new Arma Tree friends. It's an open and welcoming community ready to share the experiences with you. At number 4, we're diving into combat stances. You're probably familiar with the basics, crouch with the X key, prone with the Z key, and the default standing position that everyone spawns in. But there's a hidden gem that even seasoned Arma veterans might not know. By pressing and holding the control key along with the W, A, S or D keys, you can fluidly 
adapt your combat stance to fit any firefight scenario. This simple yet effective technique allows you to stay nimble and make quick adjustments to your posture, giving you an edge in combat situations. So remember to utilize these combat stances to your advantage and you'll be better prepared for whatever challenges Arma Tree throws your way. Coming in at number 5, we have Weapon Stabilization. To stabilize your weapon on objects like low walls or while in the prone position, simply press the C key. This feature is a game changer when it comes to maintaining accuracy in various situations. However, it's essential to keep in mind that weapon stabilization is limited to specific combat stances. You won't be able to use the C key in every stance, so make sure you're in the right position to take full advantage of this useful tool. At number 6 we have free look. This nifty feature gives you full control of your character's head, separate from your body's orientation. To activate free look, simply double tap the left alt key. It's a powerful tool in Arma, allowing you to scan your surroundings without altering your character's position. This separate head control can be a game changer in various situations. Let's move on to number 7, zeroing your weapon. You have two options for adjusting the range of your weapon. First, you can use the page up or page down keys to manually adjust the zeroing range. Alternatively, you can press and hold the left control key and then use your mouse wheel to zero your weapon more precisely. This allows you to make accurate shots over different distances with ease. He's down. At number eight, we're taking a closer look at the Titan MRPL Compact, the AT or anti-tank version. This powerful launcher gives you the ability to engage your targets with precision. To enhance your targeting capabilities, you can press the N key to switch to thermal vision, helping you spot enemies even in low visibility conditions. If you need to change the firing mode, simply hit the F key to toggle between top attack and direct attack modes. When you've got your target in sight, use the T key to lock on to target. One crucial thing to remember for this to work is that either your target or their vehicle must have a hot engine running or a heat signature as the missile won't fire without this key detail. So make sure your target's engine is on and you'll be ready to unleash the Titan MRPL Compact's full potential. Number 9 is all about understanding mod types and how to use them effectively. Let's say you've been inspired by a Karma Cut video and just purchased Army Tree, eager to dive into the same modded experience. Here's how you can make it. First, head to the Steam Workshop for Arma Tree and subscribe to the mod you want. Once you've done that, open the Arma Tree Launcher, navigate to Mods and select the mod you wish to use. Arma will let you know if any additional mods are required, like dependencies, and you can quickly address this by loading the selected mods or subscribing to them. After that, it's time to play with mods. Now let's say you've got a mod preset you want to use. Just locate the preset file you've downloaded and drag it into the mods section of the Arma Tree Launcher. This action will automatically download all the mods within the preset. Alternatively, you can go to the top right of the presets list, find the import at the bottom and click it to import the preset you've downloaded. When it comes to mod types, there are two categories, client side and server side mods. Client side mods affect only you, like reshade mods, and don't impact others on the server. However, if you're using client-side mods, ensure that the server you're joining allows these mods outside of its server mod list. On the other hand, server-side mods are essential to join specific servers. You'll typically find the required mod preset on the server's Discord server as a HTML file. Download it 
and follow the steps I mentioned earlier regarding presets to get everything in order. Now you're all set to explore the wonderful world of Armour Tree mods and enjoy the game your way. As we approach the final point, number 10, remember to have fun. In Armour Tree, it's all about enjoying yourself, and there's no one size fits all approach. Whether you're diving into vanilla armour or donning a furry suit to take on Seesaw, the beauty of the armour community lies in its diversity. No matter your playstyle, there's always a unit, group or player out there who shares your passion. I'm James 97 and I hope this video has provided some valuable insights for your armour tree journey. If you've stuck around until the end, please consider leaving a like, dropping a comment down below and if you've done either or both, don't forget to hit that subscribe button with all the enthusiasm of a massive explosion. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, happy gaming.